Congratulations, everyone, for being part of this uh, series. Tell us a little bit about your characters and why you're so excited to be part of this series. That's an easy one for me. Yeah. <laughs> I play High King Gil Galad. Yeah. I am uh, King of the Elves. And uh, the second answer is I'm King of the Elves. And, <laughs> and why did I take the part? Well, because I'm King of the Elves. <laughs> I'm the ultimate king. Yeah. I mean, and he is a phenomenal character historically in Legendarium. You know, he, he served and, and was the last uh, High King of the Noldor. He had the longest reign and also presided over the longest period of peace in Middle Earth. Um, uh, but also being Tolkien, we know there's some strife along the way. Uh, yes, so I'm playing Farazon, and he's of the island kingdom of Numenor. And he is Chancellor of Numenor, consul to the Queen Regent, Queen Miriel, and he's also head of the guildsmen. I mean, he's he does everything, basically. <laughs> and uh, so, yes, so he's high up in Numenorian society, a very powerful figure. And he has a son, uh, Kemen, who I guess he's going to be part of his legacy that he's uh, leaving behind. Yeah, Kemen uh, admires his father. He wants to follow in his footsteps. He'd love to be a political figure himself, but he doesn't really understand what that means at this point. His dad's seen a lot. He's been forged by a lot of difficulty in Numenor. Whereas Kemen's only known comfort. So when we meet him, he's just enjoying being young and having no problems, but problems are on the horizon. Mm -hmm. um, and I play Princess Deesa, um, our first uh, female dwarf to kind of have a poignant space within um, uh, uh, on television within the series. So um, yeah, it feels great. She's a wife, she's a mother, she possesses some magical and very powerful gifts. And it's great to see her journey um, uh, with her husband, Prince Durin IV. And of course, her own individual journey of um, serving her, her, her kingdom as a, as a princess. And, uh, you, and you have musical background as well, and you get to sing. I do, I do. I, I have musical background, um, which is which is wonderful. A theatrical musical background, which I feel are such brilliant transferable skills into such an epic theatrical piece of, of, of television, actually. Um, and you will certainly hear my um, diaphragm and and vocal pipes do some work for sure. Oh, that's great. And you talk about filming in New Zealand and what were the challenges during COVID and everything? Um, it was challenging to be so far from home for so long, to be away from your place of comfort and, and for many of us away from family and friends. Um, but in spite of that, the country of New Zealand and the people of New Zealand welcomed us and made us feel so at home. I mean, that's to say nothing of the excellent work ethic of the crew and the artistry of the craftspeople there. Just the disposition of the, co the country mm -hmm. Um, kind of fueled our joy and artistic spirit the entire time we were there. We were very fortunate to have had that opportunity. Do you know what I found as well from being so far away from home mm -hmm. is that in some conversations that you had with family, you connected more. Because sometimes when you go and see family, because, you know, you're all used to each other's company, you love each other a bit, so you're like, Oh, hey, man, how you doing? You're right there. When are you going back? Okay, how long are you down for? Okay, great, lovely stuff. But because you're at the other end of the world, not these Zoom meetings, mm. <laughs> you're like, hey, tell us how everything's going. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're really connecting. You're having these really wonderful conversations that, you know, lasted for, you know, a couple of hours sometimes. And that was really lovely. Mm -hmm. That was, I thought, oh, wow, this is this is great. We haven't really, you know, with some people, you go like, oh, I haven't done that in a while. You know, not not because you don't like each other or anything. Of course, you love each other, but like you just don't, you don't connect. And because of that distance, all of a sudden there was this wonderful connection, these wonderful conversations. Just the know it's You're from New Zealand. I am from New yeah. Zealand. <laughs> so how is it? You're just right in your home steps, like. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I feel like we could have only started this journey here. It's such a special place, and obviously we've got a real connection to Tolkien. And I felt. Um, yeah, proud that I could host a lot of people from all over the world in such a special place, no question. Mm -hmm. And how did you prepare for your roles? Was there a lot of physical training, uh, coach dialects and that kind of stuff? All of it. All of it. Um, all of the from advice. research to dialect to um, late night discussions mm -hmm. in our personal homes about our theories about Tolkien and 
um, the visions of his work that we wanted to implant in our work, um, and it is ongoing. You know, the, luckily those texts are so dense and beautiful that there's so much to draw from them um, that you can keep returning to that source material and every time you do it gives you something back. And I feel the same way about the people we're working with, mm. that um, there are kind of these infinite wells of artistry and um, uh, we can steal from each other, frankly, <laughs> you know. Well, thank you very much for joining us.